It's not easy to get a remote job due to high competition. You have to compete against local talent and job seekers from all across the country. Heading into 2023, the number of job seekers for remote work is high. How are you gonna stand out when everyone and their mother is applying for the same jobs as you? Plus, what if you don't have much professional tech experience? Is it even worth the hassle? Or are there a couple of strategies you can use to increase the odds of you landing a remote tech support job ASAP? In this breakdown, I'll review how to find which companies are hiring for remote tech support, what your resume should look like, and how to address the lack of professional tech experience. Also, I'll review how to tackle the most common interview questions you'll see for this role. And last but not least, by the end of this breakdown, you'll know the most important thing you should be doing every day to land a remote tech support job. When using the Indeed job search site, go to the what field and type the word title in quotes, followed by a colon, then the phrase tech support in quotes in the what field. Then type remote in quotes in the where field. Finally, select last 24 hours with the date posted filter. This will pull up only remote jobs with tech support in the title that have been posted in the last 24 hours. You can try the same trick on LinkedIn, but not all the results will have the words tech support in the title. But it looks like most of the results will be on target. The reason why you want to find the newest job postings is because according to LinkedIn's research, you're four times more likely to hear back about a position if you apply within the first 10 minutes of the job being posted online. I'm not saying you should be rushing to apply within 10 minutes. What I am saying is you want to get your resume across their desk within a day or so of the job being posted. They may have an urgent need and be down to fill the position ASAP. Keep watching and I'll show you how to get your job poster to see your resume without applying through Indeed or LinkedIn. Now your resume should reflect that you have the skills and experience necessary to work in a remote tech support role. You should list any relevant software and hardware support skills and customer service experience. Bonus points for any phone and email support experience too, you know. Additionally, be sure to highlight any problem solving skills you may have. Make sure to add any certifications like the CompTIA A plus or the CCNA. Another best practice is to use resume keywords. Keywords are words or phrases that relate to particular requirements for a job. They're the skills, abilities, and credentials that a hiring manager looks for in a candidate. The closer a match, the better your chances of being selected for an interview. A lot of companies use keyword scanning software to filter which resume should be looked at. So in theory, if you use the right keywords on a resume for a job application, your resume should get past the scanner. But you gotta take the time to customize each resume for each job, and who knows if it even works. I have a way to get around the scanner, so just stick around a bit and keep watching. But if you worked a previous remote job, you wanna include your experience with it in the skills section of your resume. If you never worked remote before, then add time management to your skills section. Regardless, you should always emphasize time management in several of the bullet points listed under your job experiences. Poor time management can make your remote environment very stressful and isolating at times. You might struggle to balance your work responsibilities with your personal ones. Hiring managers are looking to avoid hiring people with poor time management because that's a headache for them to manage. If you don't have any tech experience, you can still make a case for why you're the best candidate for the job by doing the following. Make sure your resume says what steps you're taking to address your lack of professional tech support experience. List any boot camps you're enrolled in. Add any Udemy courses or LinkedIn courses, home labs, and certifications you're studying for too. You want the resume to paint a picture that you're motivated to work with the proof being your willingness to learn. As you rack up the interviews, you're going to see different interview questions. One common interview question that you should be ready to answer is, what's your troubleshooting process? The question is meant to check your approach towards identifying a problem and finding its solution. The best way to answer this is to quote the CompTIA troubleshooting theory. For the a exam, there's six steps. Step one, identify the problem. Step two, come up with a theory as to what caused the problem. Step three, test the theory to see if it's right. For example, 
If the power goes out, I might come up with a theory that the power went out in the entire neighborhood. I can test my theory by looking out the window to see if the street lights are still on. Step four, once you confirm your theory is right, put together a plan to fix it. Fixing the problem can be anything from making a software update to passing the problem to a more senior tech support rep. Step five is making sure the problem is solved and nothing was broken along the way. I once had a friend take their car to get an oil change. When the car was ready for pickup, it started making a strange sound. You can't tell me they didn't mess something up doing their quote, fixing the problem. When you help someone over the phone with a tech problem, make sure they don't walk away from the call with more problems than they started. It's great that you helped them reinstall Zoom on their laptop, but now their Windows firewall won't let Zoom connect to the internet? How do you think that makes the customer feel about your so-called help? And finally, step six, document the outcome. This is the most important troubleshooting step. Chances are you're gonna get similar calls about the same issues. Instead of wasting time trying to relearn how to solve the problem, if you take good notes, the solution should already be documented. You wanna stress that you know this concept when you're in an interview. This lets the hiring manager know that you're an efficient-minded individual who'll save time on troubleshooting calls. It helps them view you as a candidate that can help them reach their ticket closeout numbers. Now, remember how I mentioned there's a way past the resume keyword scanner filter? It's called networking. Don't be like one of those people that submit 200 job applications a month just to get three follow-up emails from somebody that might be interested in hiring them. You want people to vouch for you. Let people open doors for you. You want to start building a network that acts like a job referral machine. That means every day you need to be making a meaningful connection with at least one person every day. For example, respond to someone's post on LinkedIn, then hit them up with a connection request. Then a day later, ask them a question about what it's like to work at their company. Then reach out to them again another week later, letting them know you're studying for the CompTIA certification. Ask them if they recommend a specific certification for the work they do. Now do this type of professional outreach every day until you build a list of about 30 active connections. Keep the lines warm for all 30. Every day you should talk to at least one of them because at some point you're gonna be looking for a tech support role and you're gonna find that job poster is a first degree connection to one of your 30. And that's when you strike. Hit up your new friend and ask them for help. Ask them if they can help you by reaching out to the job poster and forwarding your resume. People react to cosigns and you wanna build an army of co-signers. This is how you become an interview machine. Let your network set up the interviews for you. If you work the networking angle every day, you should get enough interview opportunities to land a remote tech support job within the first couple of months of 2023, max. The pay isn't the highest for remote tech support, but it's a way into the industry. However, if you're looking to get into a higher paying entry level tech role, click or tap the screen to watch another video I have. It's called Tech Sales Career Path Breakdown with Salaries. If you got value out of this video, hit like and subscribe and please share it as well. I appreciate your time and see you on the next one.